What do you feel when you see this color? If you're from the West, this might make you think of an emergency or a stop sign or something that might be wrong. But did you know that red can evoke an entirely different feeling in Asian countries? For example, in China, the color red signifies luck and prosperity. So seeing something like this may evoke positive emotions instead of negative ones. In this video, we're going to dive deep into understanding cultural differences and why it's so important to know not just only as a human being, but also as a content creator or as a business and many more reasons. So, but before we get into it, hit that subscribe button so we can continue to feed you nuggets of knowledge on brain and behavior. We can't start talking about cultural differences without first touching on Gerd Hofstede, a prominent figure in the study of this very field. Hofstede is a renowned Dutch social psychologist and researcher widely recognized for his groundbreaking work on cultural dimensions and their impact on behavior, particularly within organizations and societies. Throughout his career, Hofstede has published numerous articles and books on cultural dimensions, organizational culture, and management practices. But among his work, his book Culture's Consequences, published in 1980, is considered to be one of the most notable work in the field. In a research he did back in the early 1970s, Hofstede developed what is now famously known as the Hofstede Cultural Dimensions Theory, where he analyzed data on employees from different countries and noticed underlying cultural patterns. He noted that there were six key cultural dimensions that could help organizations and businessmen understand how cultural values influence general behavior and attitudes. The first one was power distance. This refers to how members of a society who are less powerful accept and expect that power will be distributed unequally. Power in this context is how people in that society perceive, value, and exercise power. Societies with what is labeled as high power distance tend to accept hierarchical structures more readily, for example, Mexico, Saudi Arabia, Russia, South Korea, etc. Societies with low power distance tend to distribute power more evenly, for example, Sweden, Austria, Canada, Australia. The second was about individualism versus collectivism. This reflects the degree to which individuals prioritize their own interests versus the interests of the collective group. Societies that are more individualistic in nature tend to value personal freedom, autonomy, and individual achievements, for example, many countries in the West, while collectivist societies emphasize group harmony, cooperation, and interdependence, for example, countries in the East. This is the dimension that explores the degree in which that society perceives masculine values, example, assertiveness, competition, and material success versus feminine values, nurturing, cooperation, and quality of life. This idea of masculinity and femininity in these cultures does not refer to the gender or characteristics of an individual, but instead it is of the norms and values associated with ge different genders and expectations. The fourth dimension of uncertainty avoidance looks at the extent to which a society feels comfortable with ambiguity, risk, and uncertainty, hence the name. Societies with high uncertainty avoidance tend to have rigid rules, formal structures, and a preference for avoiding uncertainty as a whole. For example, venturing off to start your own business. Societies with low uncertainty avoidance, however, are more tolerant of change and ambiguity. Then there is the long-term versus short-term orientation. This is a dimension that examines how a given society views and focuses on maintaining long-term traditions and values or putting attention to short-term results. Long-term oriented cultures, for example, emphasize persistence and perseverance to sort of grind it all out, while short-term oriented cultures prioritize quick results and immediate gratification. Finally, the last dimension on the list is about indulgence versus restraint. This is what looks at the degree to which a society allows and enjoys gratification of desires and impulses. Indulgent societies tend to place a higher emphasis on leisure and personal enjoyment, while restrained societies have stricter social norms and a focus on suppressing that immediate gratification, potentially for some greater goal of the whole. So as you can see from the elements in Hofstede's cultural dimensions theory, there are some key differences in how a society operates and functions. That's not to say that one is better than the other, but it's a great way to understand why people behave and think the way they do depending on where they're from or how they grew up. 
Now, supporting these ideas, it's important to also take note of the differing behaviors across cultures, especially in communication. Different cultures have unique communication styles, which can play a huge role in how consumers respond to a given marketing message. These communication styles can be broken down into two major categories. First is indirect communication or high context cultures. These are cultures like Japan and Korea and Arab countries where communication relies heavily on implicit messages, non-verbal cues, and more of a shared understanding. In this case, context, social relationships, and subtleties in social norms are crucial to effectively communicate. Direct communication or low context cultures are countries like the US, Germany, and Australia, which prioritize explicit and direct communication. The individualistic perspective garners that everyone may have different opinions and ideas, so clarity, frankness, and precision in communication is preferred. Then there's also cultural symbols and their underlying meanings, which are kind of different per culture. Colors, symbols, gestures, numbers, they can all have different connotations. For example, as mentioned at the start of this video, the color red may symbolize luck and prosperity in China, but signifies emergency and danger and stop in Western cultures. Numbers can also mean different things depending on where you're from. For instance, the number four is considered unlucky in many East Asian countries, including China, Japan, and Korea, as it sounds similar to the word for death in their respective languages. This is why oftentimes you'll see the fourth floor in any elevator is replaced with the letter F or simply missing entirely. Depending on the culture, hand gestures can also have different meanings. In certain parts of the Middle East, the thumbs up gesture, commonly used in Western cultures to express approval or positivity, can actually be considered highly offensive. In the Middle East, it can be equivalent to that of a middle finger. Social norms and values are also important to take note of. The way people perceive family, gender norms, hierarchy, and social relationships can significantly impact behavior for both social interaction and consumer decisions. In collectivist cultures, such as in many Asian and African societies, the concept of family extends beyond the nuclear family to include extended relatives. In these cultures, family values and group harmony are highly prioritized. In collectivist cultures, such as in many African and Asian societies, the concept of family extends beyond the nuclear family to include extended relatives. In these cultures, family values and group harmony are highly prioritized. As such, many brands may adjust their messaging to align with family well-being and an emphasis on relationships, community connections, and social responsibility. Then when it comes to gender norms, in some cultures, the expectations for what genders can and cannot do might influence what types of products are sold. For example, in countries like Korea, the idea of taking care of your skin, hair, and style is heavily emphasized for men, just as much as it is for women. But in Western cultures like countries in Europe, there may be less emphasis on men's grooming products, as a perception that a man with great interest in skin care may be considered feminine. It's important to understand cultural differences because for one, we live in a more globalized world. And with the interconnectedness of the internet, the opportunity to reach audiences across borders is rife. By understanding these differences, you can learn to be more culturally sensitive in your messaging and communication approach. As a business, knowing this helps to expand your markets far beyond what you're already targeting. Also, modern consumers want to be seen and heard. They seek relatability. By understanding cultural nuances, you, whether as a content creator or business, can deliver content and products that hit consumer relevance, aligning with their values, aspirations, and identities. Then there's the aspect of miscommunication or just simply being offensive, even if it isn't intentional. As a business or a content creator, it can have severe consequences to be indirectly offensive. Not only does it demonstrate ignorance, but it also shows that you have not done your research into getting to know your target audience. Demonstrating cultural understanding and appreciation shows that a person or a company is committed to inclusivity. Embracing diverse cultures helps to foster a sense of belonging and appreciation among consumers or viewers. In the end, understanding cultural differences is crucial for everyone, not only content creators and brands. 
It helps us reach out and connect with the greater world at large instead of remaining in our small bubbles. Additionally, it helps you as a person to become more open-minded and empathetic to the experiences and perspective of others. Understanding and appreciating cultural differences ultimately fosters a more harmonious and inclusive society. So if you've liked this video about the cultural differences in consumer behavior, try to click the video on the left as we teach a little bit more about consumer psychology and make sure to subscribe to this channel so we can continue to help you mine the gold in mind.